play, but this is an all brand new show. And the show is called All Up In Your Business with Sebastian. Yes, I'm gonna get all up in the business of my guest today. It's gonna be a little bit cheeky. It's gonna be a little bit risque. It's gonna be a lot of information. And I hope you will actually get some inspiration from my guest cause she's an amazing person. But before we do that, if you're tuning in for the first time, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Sebastian Ane. I'm the Almost Naked CEO, currently reporting from planet Earth. And the time is amazing. Well, I am the male Olivia Pope of branding, PR, and digital growth. I create and help entrepreneurs and brands and help them to use the power of creativity, engagement, and leadership to bring the communities and brands together. If you're watching from anywhere, please follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, anywhere at Sebastian Oni. And my name is spelled S-Z-E-B-A-S-T-I-A-N-O-N-N-E. Yes, it's not Sebastian, it's Sebastian. Now, if you're watching from anywhere other than Romania TV page, please, 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 come to facebook.com slash Romaniac TV. Until you come to facebook.com slash Romaniac TV, I will not be able to see your comments. I will not be able to interact with you. What we love to do here at Romaniac TV is that when you're commenting, when we see your comment, we like to acknowledge them. Hey, Kimanzi, how are you going? There you go, there's my man. Um, and we'll tell you more about Kimanzi soon as well. So yes, if you want to uh, want your comments like Kimanzi to be visible, please come to facebook.com TV. If you're watching right now, if you're watching live, please comment with hashtag live and let me know where, you where are you tuning in from, uh, which part of the world you're in because we have global audience. And just a disclaimer, uh, I do have puppies in my office, they may talk in between, and I may lean in a little bit just to move my screen because I need to see a couple of things here. And please, please, please tag your friends, you know, share it on your timeline, share, 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 sharing is caring. Please do share because unless you share, how are you gonna watch it with your friends? Please start a watch party in a Facebook group if you like. If you you know if you want to get inspired, if you want people to learn things, this is all. This is the time to do that. All up in your business is all about uh, connecting people, in, uh, bringing the guests who have so much information, experience, and uh, their journeys to share and inspire each other about. As many of you you who are tuned in know, my two thousand nineteen journey is all about inspire. I have in my life made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot of things, have been inspired by so many other people uh, to be a better person, to, be, to become what I am. I have seen failures, I have seen success, and I know one thing, when we help each other, when we learn from each other, we inspire each other, uh, think lives get better, uh, you have better businesses, and you grow together as a community. And um, yes, please drop in a hello. Please say hello. Please, please like bomb me if you're right now watching from a mobile because I know mobile lets you do that. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Like, love. You know, just and even if you're not happy, just send a frown. I'm fine with that. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna lean in a little bit. So bear with me. I'm sorry if I'm too close or if I'm not visible. Uh, there we go. Now, this is going to be funny. All right. So, yes, and I'm going to do that once more. Sorry, uh, producer. I just have the arrangement a little bit funny. So, once again, before we go on further, please, if you're watching from anywhere else, please come to facebook.com at Romaniac TV. This is All Up in Your Business with Sebastian, myself. And this is brought to you by Sebastian.com and AliciaCurry.com. Uh, AliciaCurry.com is a personal branding uh, business, and Sebastian.com is all about social media, uh, again, branding and leadership services. So, and we're actually live streaming this. We are BeLive.tv, who are our preferred live streaming, streaming partner. Now, leaning out again, just to adjust things. This is funny, but that's okay. All right, so let's talk about my guest. 
love. She's a powerhouse of kindness because of, you know, she's a beacon of optimism. She's a superhuman filled with strength. And I say this because our friendship, you know, we got connected through another friend. Uh, we got to know each other. I have never, ever, ever seen her say anything negative, uh, post anything negative. At all times, she's just been such a positive spirit. And I'm not saying that, you know, she is not human and she never feels sad. We've shared, uh, you know, things and situations where I know she also goes through things and she also experiences things. But what I love about her is she's always positive, optimistic, very inclusive. And we'll talk about that today. Um, well, she's funny. She's stunning. I love her smile. So, you know, it's... Uh, I unfortunately she's taken so I can't do anything about that and she's a cultural transformation strategist if you don't know what that term means we're going to talk all about that because what she talks about in as a cultural transformation process is very important and if men are out there please tune in and if there are any feminist women out there please tune in because you want to you're going to want to listen to what she has to say. Um, you know what? Also, my guest, she's often mistaken as her uh, the sister of her, older sister of her daughters. That's how stunning and gorgeous she is. Uh, she's all about women empowerment. But here's the cultural transformation strategist angle comes in. She believes in empowering women without disempowering men. For her, it's all about evolving together and create an all-inclusive culture, all-inclusive future where everybody grows. And there is, um, I don't want to use a statement that she always uses about uh, this uh, because she is great at it. So I'm just bubbling to say it all. But of course, I want her to share uh, things about that. Uh, but I'm going to give you a warning. Literally going to give you a warning. If she hasn't had coffee, she is dangerous. So if you want to go near her, especially in the morning, make sure you have seven cups of coffee, three for me, four for her. Just, you know. Um, I'm super thrilled and honored to announce that Cindy Constable is going to be the very first guest appearing on this show today, All Up In Your Business. I've been waiting to do this. Um, so uh, I, I just want to uh, welcome my guest. Uh, let's let's bring the, uh, bring Cindy Constable out and let's get to know her. Hey, there everyone. she is. Can you guys hear hey, me? Hey, Cindy. Hey, Sebastian. Glad to be here. Okay, we have a little bit of the... There she is. Sorry, oh, I'm here. Here. Hey, I'm excited to be on the premiere episode of All Up in Your Business. Who else would I bring other than you? You're the one who has to. Oh, hey, I have to go all up in your business, and I know a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to dig things, and hmm, I hope That's we'll still be friends after this. <laughs> well, I'm looking How are you being? Fishing all the dirt. I'm doing well, very well. Thank you. Just well, back I on. have to begin with an announcement for people, really. Yeah. So you're not who you really are. Uh, why I'm, do I say that? Because I'm, just less than two days ago, you were not Cindy Constable, right? I was not. I was Cindy Kelly up until a few two weeks ago. <laughs> Absolutely. So first of all, let me begin with a big congratulations to you or your annual man, Kimanzi. Uh, you. you know, you guys are so much fun. Uh, you just got married, uh, I believe, this Sunday. Yeah, it was two weeks ago, February 17th, so just over two weeks yeah, ago. So you just got married, and I'm, oh my God, I watched the clip, well, the entire video. You made it, made me feel like I was there. So you've got to give credit to the videographer. They did a great job. Yes, they what really did. Beautiful wedding, amazing. So I'm going to shut up, and I just want to ask you, uh, how does it feel being married? Uh, it's um, great. We just got back from a beautiful honeymoon in the Maldives, which was amazing. And, you know, our first week back to reality. So, you know, we're in full wedded bliss right now. Everything is fantastic. Uh, 
Well, you know what, with you and Kimanzi, knowing you two and at the endless optimism you guys have, I'm sure this bliss is going to carry on for a long, long, long time. Absolutely. Happiness right. is So let's begin with one thing I forgot to actually say in uh, the introduction is you're also a TEDx speaker. I am. Yes. I gave my first TEDx and talk last year. Exactly. And you talked about, in, I watched your TEDx and it was amazing. First thing is I love how amazingly creative and, you know, how beautifully you put things and, you know, say, articulate what your message. It's so connecting. Even after knowing you for so many years, I felt like I'm watching for the first time and I was amazed as if I'm just seeing a new speaker who's got so much to share. So it's, you're, you're just beautiful. Thank you. Well, talking about TEDx, you spoke about a very special topic and you, you know you are a cultural transformation strategist in your tedx you uh you know you've spoken about the, the uh, process about uh empowering women without disempowering men yes what's all that about well you know in recent years we've seen um, an exceptional awareness on the prioritization of workplace culture by both the employers and the employees and one of those facets of that, the personality, you will, of, of a company is gender relations. You know, we've heard a lot of talk about the gender pay gap, you know, and what's happening, uh, the Me Too movement, and the treatment of women in general in the workplace. But I felt like, you know, I, I'm as big a feminist as they come, and I'm full support of women, huge women's empowerment. But I feel like the feminist movement had almost swung too far in the wrong direction. We were to the point where we were advocating for a changing of the guard instead of a seat at the table. And so my goal was to point out the fact that we can empower our women without disempowering our men. So we can come together to create you know, behavioral change and behavioral practices in the workplace without you know, the changing of the guard, removing the men from, from the board and placing women in instead because you know, any uh, minority class could start making that argument. So we needed to find a way to go from just diversity for diversity's sake, you know, that step to inclusion, but really to integration. And that was kind of the purpose of my talk. Right, and, uh, and, and we're gonna share that uh, talk on your page as well. So anybody who's watching right now, guys, uh, after the show, make sure to go to dramaniac.com slash Cindy, and you'll find the TED Talk there as well, and you'll find more information about Cindy there as well and how to contact her. Hey, Holly. Holly is a friend of yours and now mine too. Yes, she is. So um, I, I understand uh, the point you made, in, uh, and, and that's one of the biggest things. People uh, take feminism as, and I, I, you know, I have to say with all due respect, specifically women, uh, feminism, uh, feminism has somehow become a thing where you've got to just take all the power away. You've just got to, you know, fight against the men and, and take over. However, you don't believe in that. And, and you know, obviously, you know, if you had such uh, a mindset, we wouldn't be friends, you right. know. Uh, so that's, that's what brings me to the question. Can feminism actually exist without, uh, is, do you agree with the uh, version of feminism, which really is, if I may, a little bit militant about destroying men? Well, I think that's where some of the terms like, you know, feminazi have come from, um, you know, and like, you know, I, I don't need a man, I can finance myself, I can do it all for me. You know, I think some of that, you know, is, is just like I said, it's like a pendulum swing. We've gone too far in that direction. And I don't believe that we need to demonize our men. Now, do I agree with the way that some men have treated women? You know, I feel like sometimes the the alt, the very uh, hard feminist stance kind of puts all men in one basket. And not all men are the same, not all men are bad. And, you know, the same time that women are going to evolve, men evolve as well. So we need to give men credit for the evolution that they've seen. Right. So um, 
how like how can we I, I think we got a, a got a little bit of disconnection there uh from my end uh do you hear me still yes yes, yes. Okay. so um you know and and i still love this statement you know you don't need to listen empower uh, men to empower women and i know i'm kind of repeating myself but you know uh, well i'm a gay man and i i am a feminist myself but one challenge I face is when I do do pro-feminist things, I get knocked off. You know what I mean? Like there's a presumption, I'm a male, so I am not the right person to be in the group. Um, and that's why I'm a lot more interested in your version of that. So as a cultural transformation strategist, uh, what really, how really do you focus, uh, how do you uh, really do you help entrepreneurs and businesses to change and shift that culture from being you know because one thing right now that's really hot is the me too movement yes. you know and people are scared you know men and i speak for men like me they're scared to say to to do anything that could become you know, it becomes a situation, it becomes a complication, and all they're just trying to do is sometimes be friendly, sometimes, you know, things are unintentional as well, but everything is taken in a different context. And I, I totally, absolutely, 100% support the Me Too movement, um, but sometimes I believe it has, in some cases, it has been taken so, too far, and you, we have taken men we have, uh, you know, pronounced men guilty before even facts have been established. What do you feel about that? And how do you uh, sort of, you know, see that in the workplace? Um, yes, I, I agree with the sense that people are getting um, convicted, if you will, in the court of public opinion before the facts of the case are viewed out. We just lost our connection again. Uh, we just had a mishap. Sorry, we just had a mishap in the, in the studio. I'm right back. So sorry. Can you hear me? Can you yes. see me? I can see you now. Sorry, we just had a mishap in the studio. That's what happens on live. So I'm <laughs> back. Yeah, all of those live technical glitches. <laughs> That's right. So I want to dig a little bit uh, different uh, here. So you're a woman. Of course, yeah. you believe in women's rights. Uh, you know, you are, you are in a position, you have gone from a journey of obviously seeing difficult situations, abuse, and other uh, things that could have changed your view. You could have been one of those feminazis. Or, you know, entirely against men, but you haven't become that. How did you come from that journey to here and still have this positive view about men? And I would rather say not men about equality, which is a totally different version of where uh, we are today in terms of Me Too and, you know, feminazi movement. Yeah, and there's, there's all kinds of, you know, disparate factors that go on, you know, in today's uh, workplace culture. You know, you've got demographic shifts. You know, there's the introduction, you know, of Gen Z into the workforce. You have, um, you know, an aging workforce with the baby boomers. You have, you know, diversity and inclusion initiatives that are that are going on. It's been um, kind of a buzzword in the workplace lately. You know, diversity and inclusion. We need to be more diverse. We need to be more diverse. Um, you've got talent shortages. You know, automation. There's a constant evolution of technology. So there's lots of factors that play into, you know, workplace. We have, you know, different nationalities, you have different religious beliefs, you have different, um, you know, gender preferences. There's all kinds of things that have come together in order to create these issues and these shifts in the workplace culture. So, and, you know, the things that I have experienced in my professional life, as well as my personal life, you know, there's two ways you can look at it. You, know, you can fight the tide, you know, and for me, if I'm anti 
something, then I'm not really looking for solution. I'm just fighting against. So my goal is to be pro, and I am pro woman. I am not anti man. And I do believe that you know there has been um, you know issues with women against men in the workplace as well. You know, and men are underrepresented in that instance. You know, where it's not like oh really she harassed you. And so it's unfair. You know, to to be just talking about men and women, there's all kinds of diversity issues in the workplace. And for me, the best solution is to educate and inform so that we can find ways to transform that behavior instead of always looking to punish the perpetrator. Because whether or not we want to admit it, we all have unconscious biases that we operate with every day. And so some people may be operating from a belief set, from an upbringing that is totally unconscious to them. And if educated, we can move together towards solutions instead of just looking for ways to punish, you know, wrongdoers. That's right. And, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you have such a dispute. And I'm pretty sure when you talk to other women about that, some may agree, some may disagree. Uh, do you get into heated arguments about this at all with other women? Um, yeah, you know, and I, I, you know, some some women or, or men as well, you know, someone who has been, you know, violated in some way, and they are operating from still from that place of pain and hurt, and they haven't, you know, resolved those issues or dealt with those triggers, you know, they're, those are triggers for them. So they're reacting from a place of anger. Now, I'm not saying we should excuse anyone who behaves inappropriately, there should be appropriate consequences. But I also believe that people do evolve, can evolve and have evolved. You know, especially if you're dealing with things that happened, you know, 30 plus years ago, we may be in the present day dealing with someone very different than the person who perpetrated. You know, just like we see in the news for politicians who change their mind on, you know, LGBTQ, how they were against and now they're for. For me, that's the introduction of new information and you evolve and you begin to understand and you may change your stance. So I think we should be looking for solutions because it's really difficult to come together and have a conversation about, you know, the gender disparity if men feel like they're being attacked during that conversation, because when you attack, you naturally defend yourself. And so we need, we need I, to be able to have those conversations. Absolutely. And I agree with that because, you know, in, as I said, I've been in uh, such situations where I might be, you know, trying to be supportive, but, uh, and, you know, there have been misunderstandings. And the fun thing is, they don't know I'm gay and it's taken a different context until I say that and it changes everything and suddenly I'm harmless. But that's the point. My sexuality and orientation should not decide that it's safe to be around me for women. Correct. And my gender should not automatically make me a culprit. Right. Correct. And I think, you know, that's that's exactly what your point, you know, what your entire yes. work is about. Yes. And those are those unconscious biases and that, you know, companies will call it cultural sensitivity training, you know, diversity training. But those are those unconscious biases that people are showing up to work with in the workplace. So if and you are a big person of color and you're male, you might be a threat to me. But if you're gay, like you said, oh, you're suddenly not a threat. Or if you're a woman, maybe you're not a threat. So we have those exactly. direct unconscious biases that we need to work through. And there's, you know, there's been data and testing. Um, you know, there's an onslaught of data nowadays that are converging to create both immediate and long-term changes. But there's ways that you can demonstrate to people what those unconscious biases are so you can open up the space for dialogue. So we can start to understand you know, each other's position and you're not dealing with microaggressions and things of that nature. And, you know, really creating that cultural shift in the workplace, you know, is kind of a, a holistic approach. It can't just be a policy that says we, we don't discriminate because, you know, people are enforcing that policy. So we need to be having those conversations differently and not looking to lay blame, but looking for ways to, you know, educate, inform, so that we can, you know, come together for, so, to be solution based. You know, it's got to be, you know, a lot more than just lip service and just some yes. paperwork. You do that to get away from the legal freight, you know, the situation. And you're so right in saying that, you know, uh, just that what you see makes a perception and then you react to that rather than understanding who the person is. 
Um, and going forward, you know, teams are going to be more diverse than ever. You know, the, um, we're moving to a knowledge-based society. You know, and there's a shortage absolutely. of knowledge-based workers. You know, and, and in that vein, you're going to have to cast a wider net to be able to tap into the type of talent that you want. You know, the demographics are changing. People tend to be more mobile nowadays. You have remote workforce. Well, you and I are connected from thousands of miles away. I think that's yes. a perfect example. Exactly. You know, and, yeah. and we are really good friends, and we've never met each other. But yes. that's what it is. And, you know, that's what it is, you know, in personal life, in professional life. Things are changing. People are connecting in so many different ways. Cultures, languages, oh, yeah. uh, you know, backgrounds. So much is different now. So obviously, this culture shift is so crucial, and right now is the time. Yes, right? and absolutely. Teams may be more far flung and have all those different backgrounds, and your teams are also going to have varied communication preferences. You know, tech really plays a big role in the in the cultural shift in the workplace because you can facilitate collaboration across time zones. You know, you can provide accommodations to people with disabilities. You can help managers to conquer, conquer their own biases through different tech solutions. Um, so there's just, you know, lots of things and lots of ways now because you've got maybe a younger workforce who's more interested in, you know, texting or email. You're going to be communicating with teams via, you know, Zoom chats or lives or, you know, virtual conferences. And, you know, so like a decade from now, you know, just think how different it's going to be. So being an effective communicator is going to be even tougher in a world where, you know, cultures are converging, you know, diverse backgrounds. There's so, are layers, to, there's so many layers to, before you actually understand each other, you can hide behind text. You, you, you know, you have internal jargon and you have, as you said, different technologies. Somebody's on the call, somebody's on video, somebody's not. And, Correct. you know, it's just so much. But we've got to take a break very soon, and I want to dig a little bit deeper into the other side of your life. So Good. I will bring you back in a second, um, uh, uh, and just don't go anywhere. Make sure you uh, I'll be right here. Into the green room. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. So uh, if you're tuning in right now, you're at the moment with um, me, Sebastian Ani, watching All Up In Your Business, where I bring in guests and deal into their personal and professional lives and uh, share with you how they um, inspire the communities, inspire the brands, and create a better business community together. And um, I just want to uh, quickly bring in my producer on the camera and introduce you to my producer, because she is... Um, uh, Okay, well, I've just been told by the producer that uh, Cindy, your uh, your fro uh, it's something is not working, so you're not off the camera, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I still want to bring my producer if my producer is ready, and just introduce you to my audience. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, there's some technical issue. We'll work on that. So. While you're still here, I'm just going to do the break anyway. I'm just going to talk about a little bit about uh, how this all happened. So, guys, if you're tuned in right now, this is All Up In Your Business with me, Sebastian. Uh, this is brought to you by Sebastian.com and AliciaCurry.com. Please go to our websites and check out our services and uh, see what we can do for you. We help you with personal branding. We help you with uh, leadership, uh, entrepreneurship services, as well as Dramaniac TV, helps you put up a show like this, all you have to do is just turn up and sit in front of the camera and run your entire show. And soon we are launching uh, uh, commercial services on Romania.com, so do check that out. Okay, I'm thank here. you for that, and thank you for bearing with us, Cindy, while you're still here, and I had to take no, this I'm break. No, I'm here, I took, okay, I, so I'm here. Can unfortunately, you see me? I don't think I'm gonna get to introduce my uh, producer right now, but I'm gonna just give a shout out anyway, and that's Alicia Curry. She is amazing, 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 uh, you know. I don't know why uh, you're not okay. hearing me, I'm here. Uh, I'm I here. don't see you, Alicia. Um, I'm not sure if you're on the camera. Okay, uh, all right, somehow I'm not seeing you, so I'm just gonna quickly refresh while you guys, Alicia, please.
Hey, hey guys. Hopefully you're hearing me because I know Sebastian might be, the technical difficulties might be on his end, but we are here. We're so excited that you've joined us. And now we are going to um, bring him back in as soon as he gets back into the lobby area. And we have a few surprises for you. Um, but he is ready to get back all up in your business as soon as, well, I'm gonna bring Cindy back up into the show and then that way I'm not here talking to you all by myself. Hey, Cindy, can you hear me? Yeah. You hear me, okay. Um, so doing, yes. so while, Sebastian. <laughs> yes, while he's there, he is, he's back. So I am going to put myself down and bring him back up into the show. Okay. <laughs> And so musical chairs, he says, give him one second. Yep. Musical chairs. So I'm bringing you down, bringing him back up. So we're going to really be playing a little musical chairs right now. Ready? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sebastian is coming back into the room right now. This is what happens in live shows sometimes. So I will say adios. Can you hear me now, Sebastian? <laughs> Well, no, wait, wait, wait. I still want to properly give you an introduction. Oh. I know you have spoken, but I just want to thank, and this is what happens with live guys. And I just want to thank my producer, Alicia Kuri here. She's also my business partner. She's the red carpet CEO and personal branding expert. And she's a Colby certified consultant who helps uh, businesses to improve their productivity. And uh, she is this amazing that when I run off the camera or my camera falls off, she still helps <laughs> us and runs the show perfectly. And the fact that she's so intelligent, she's so inspiring, I can oh, rely on her on any day. <laughs> stop, stop, come on, stop. Uh, stop. Uh, All right. <laughs> thank you so right. much. And Gimanzi, thank you so much for telling us that I was still on camera and you can hear me because, yeah, we, did, we, we, we had a little glitch for a second. But... Thank you so much for that, Sebastian. I'm gonna let you continue with your show. I'm bringing Cindy back on and I'm gonna drop out of here. So continue to have Thank a great you. show, guys. And I have to actually acknowledge a couple of comments. So when you have a chance, my producer, please put up the comments as well. I could not see anything earlier. Okay, so Holly, uh, I've said hello to you. And thank you, Holly, for tuning in. And Kimanzi obviously is here, so I'm excited. Oh, thank you, Kimanzi. That's very great. Um, too kind of you. Hey, yeah, there you are. I can see you again. Sorry, the glitches happened, but you know, I'm all up in your yeah, business. Right. Something's gonna happen, obviously. That's right. That's what happens more on live TV. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking of uh, being all up in your business, I want to get a little bit personal here. So this is not your first marriage, is it? It is not my first marriage, no, that's correct. Right, and um, you know, I know you, I know your daughters, and you know, I know the beautiful life you've had, and I also know a little bit of, you know, the tribulations you have gone through, the challenges you have faced, and here you are, still such a positive person, and I love your one message, the hashtag, love always wins. Absolutely. You continue to prove that every single day. Um, so let's get back into your marriages. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your previous marriage and what happened there? Yes. Well, my husband, Kevin, he passed away, um, in 2017. And so, uh, that was very unexpected, you know, very, uh, tragic for my family, for me and my daughters. He was, uh, more sick than we had realized and he passed away due to suddenly a uh, cardiac arrest um, you know, after entering the hospital, you know, day after in the hospital. So that was a total shock, you know, to our system. Um, you know, we were great friends, great co-parents. We actually were in the middle of a divorce at the time, um, which was very amiable. We were great friends. I was actually fortunate enough to be the one who you know, took him to the hospital and had the blessing of being by his side, you know, the entire time until he passed. So he was a beautiful soul and he will be forever, forever missed. Um, you know, I will love him, you know, forever, every day of my life. And we miss him, we miss him very, very much. But um, I've been, you know, blessed or fortunate, if you will, to, you know, be able to find 
loved after loss because I do believe that love always wins. And I think if you come from a place of love and you emote love and you look at things from a sense of love instead of a sense of bitterness or anger, you know, you, you get back what you put out. And as tragic as, you know, Kevin's death was, I chose to look at it based on the time that I had with him versus the time that I will not get to spend with him. So we had, you know, almost 20 years together and I will cherish every moment of that time. And I'll always have those memories and I have our beautiful children and soon to have our first grandchild. So I have lots to be thankful for and it just makes it easier to focus on all the good that we had versus, you know, dwelling on the times that we're not gonna have. Well, I want you to react like, what grandchildren but of course i know you so i can't but you know <laughs> you're so stunning to be a grandmother it's just unbelievable and thank you for sharing that powers full story uh, you know it is it is not easy but speaking of not easy of course when you were going through the situation you know probably a divorce which unfortunately you know things just took a different turn it's not an easy um, process to go through you're kind of going through one emotional heartbreak, even though it's amiable, but still, you know, and then oh, yeah. another thing happens. It, it just, it's kind of a, uh, if I would, uh, if you would, uh, double whammy, you know, but that's not where it stopped. People judged you. People oh, judged you for your decision, you know, right after, you know, that's what they thought right after, yes. you know. So how did you deal with that? Well, you know, from my perspective, yes, people people did judge. And what, you know, you're referring to is, you know, my, I started dating my current husband, um, what would have looked like three months post my husband's death. And one, you know, to be frank, it's nobody's business how anybody else operates their life. But two, the majority of people didn't realize that Kevin and I had not been together for a very long time. And that Kevin passed away three weeks before our court hearing for our divorce, which had been in the making for over a year. So, but all of that aside, you know, that's why I stick so hard and fast to the love always wins because they stood in judgment of me and my choices and how I chose to grieve and how I chose to live my life and what I chose to do with it. Instead of standing in love and compassion for me and trying to understand maybe what I had been going through. So my choice was I could return that judgment right back to them or I could love them where they were at. And so that's what I chose to do was love them where they were at and not take on their judgments of me because I didn't want to start to judge myself because I had enough to deal with and there were many, many dark days. Believe you me, there were many, many dark days you know, my dark nights of the soul. You shared some, so I know the story. And yes. I have to say, you are the true testament of what it means to say love always wins. You know, you've, you've over and over and over proved it. You personally helped me in my such days when I had those dark days to keep me, you know, positive, to keep me seeing. I think it's all really about the perspective. If you have a positive oh, perspective, if you look at things instead of seeing what I lost and you just look at what what is changing, what are, what's happening and what can I you know learn from this? Obviously, your perspective changes and you're a more positive person. Yes. Um, speaking of perspective, I do want to talk about uh, your uh, dashing new husband. Uh, sorry to use the term new, but he is brand new, isn't he? Yes, so, uh, how did you? Uh, Kamanzi, me? Um, we met, or actually, we didn't meet face to face, so we were kind of met virtually um, about four ish years ago, I'd say. Um, I was introduced to him by a mutual friend um, for his uh, writing coach services. So he was my writing coach, helping me get uh, published in large publications, which is one of his expertise because uh, writing is his first love. And so we got to know each other through the coaching process. And then we kind of maintained a friendship because we had some mutual friends in common. And we didn't meet in person until 
it would have been the end of 2016, like beginning of 2017. It was kind of like that Christmas, uh, New Year's break time there. Um, we met in person and, you know, we kind of had a, a little bit of a spark. It was like, wow, this is the first time we've met. And there was like a lot of, you know, connection between us, but we were both in, you know, uh, very different places, you know, in our life at that time. I was, you know, separated and, and figuring out what all that meant. And he was going through his own divorce and we kind of went our separate ways and um, remained friends like we had always been. Um, talking through, you know, uh, virtual, you know, video chats or telephone calls, texting, that kind of thing. And then we didn't start dating until um, after Thanksgiving uh, in 2017. So it was the end of November in 2017. And when we started to date. So it just oh. evolved from there. And now, you know, we're married. And, and Kivanti was uh, started as a writer coach. Now, not only is your writing coach, he's also your business partner. Yes, yes, we do. We own, we co own. Oh, so I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, hold you uh, for a moment because obviously uh, he is your business partner. You've started a life together. This life has, you've uh, you know, started a new journey, personal and professional with him. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, want to give you a little surprise. Uh, so your business partner slash writing coach slash husband is here with us. Ah, hey, babe. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Kimanzi. How are you, mate? I am wonderful. Thank you for uh, Look at you me. blushing. <laughs> I am wonderful. Thank you for having me here, and it's good to be here. And I've enjoyed the interview so far. It's been amazing. Thank you. Hey, what Thank you. Surprise. There you go. So I thought you know, well, I couldn't give you a wedding gift, and you know, I'm so far away, so I have to do <laughs> something, something special that you remember that yes, he did. So here's my gift. I present to you your husband again. <laughs> no, thank you so much. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. I actually want to ask you both guys now, of course, the life has changed, you know, starting from the journey you started. And of course, it, it wasn't easy uh, as we were speaking about, you know, people judged and everything. It wasn't easy. And then, you know, Kevin passed away. And of course, you guys are into a um, uh, life together. So I actually want to ask you, Kimanzi, uh, you know, you you have been there for her. You have been so understanding. It's It's not easy to, you know see what's happening in so many other ways. Um, what inspired you to, you know, about Cindy uh, to get to from where you started and you're here together? Oh, uh, well, I would say it's love, right? Love always wins. So I would say love uh -huh. is the main factor, but it's also who she is because even as friends, she was the most supportive friend I had ever had in my life. Um, and I think Sebastian will agree and anybody who knows Cindy will agree. Absolutely. She's the most supportive friend you could ever have. So mm -hmm. seeing that support in our friendship role and then when we started dating, we started dating, it was, it might've been like a little intense for me because I wasn't used to being supported in that way. And it kind of scared me a little bit, right? Because you want things in life and then you get them and then it's like, wow. I got them wow. <laughs> and you yeah. just have to take a moment and you have to breathe and you have to not let the fear and self limited belief wins. So the supportive person that she was the way that she has a zest for life. So she doesn't do anything half heartedly. She's all in. I remember um, this was later, obviously in our relationship, but we went to Santorini, Greece and we're on the spot that you see on, on Instagram and you see it on the postcard with the blue domes and all that good stuff, right? So we're walking down these, these stairs that are pretty steep. I'm carrying some bags. We got a guy with us and she's walking down the steps and she just sees the view and she just starts bawling, crying because <laughs> she was just so grateful to see it and to experience that moment. And that's one of many instances that happened while we're dating, before we were dating, that just I fell in love with. And so the support and who she is, her zest for life, and the way that she 
encourages you as a person to become a better version of yourself. Like you can't phone it in when you're with Cindy, whether you're her friend or we were dating and now married, you're not going to phone it in with this woman. So the way that she pushes you to become a better version of yourself, all of those things were just like too much goodness for me to resist. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. I 100% not only agree, I personally as a friend experienced that. So I exactly, you know, second that, uh, you know, if, if this was a business interview only, you're a perfect testimonial. And I agree with that testimonial. I would have said the same things, obviously, from a different angle. Uh, so uh, since Kimanzi said that, Cindy, I do want to ask you, you know, there was a time, and this is all up in, in your business, so I did warn you there are going to be some difficult questions, hopefully not too difficult. So there was a time when Kimanzi and I, you had second thoughts. It wasn't easy. You know, it was difficult. And same, you know, comes to the same thing, the positive perspective. How did you handle that? And how did you guys, you know, Cindy, you especially take that? Because you were going through a lot of changes, you know, already challenging situations and then something good comes along and then you have another challenge so yeah well for me um you know understanding as much as i do about personal development and you know the neuropsychology of people and how they operate we oftentimes want something and there's a small part of us who, that doesn't really believe that we deserve it or there might be a large part of us that doesn't believe that we deserve it. You know, people suffer from, you know, lack of self-worth, low self-esteem, and this shows up in all types of self-sabotaging behaviors. And so in our relationship, yeah, we had a hiccup along the way where, you know, those feelings, those belief systems, the lens through which you would see in the world, you know, the triggers, the things that had happened to him in his life previous we're kind of driving the bus and you know mm -hmm. you get those gremlins in your mind that tell you you're not good enough you don't deserve this this isn't real uh you're waiting for the other shoe to drop so to speak um and so he was dealing with his demons and those things kind of cropped up for him and that created a little bit of a hiccup for us but from where i sit i understand that i see self-sabotaging behavior and i recognize it i've had my own different types of self-sabotaging behavior in my life. And I've done enough personal development work to know that my role at that time was to hold space, was to hold space for him to grow into the person that I already knew he was and the person that I could see and that I could feel. And as long as I held space for him and encouraged him and allowed him to do what he needed to do to grow, that everything would be fine. And well, I was right, and so here we are. And, and you know what what I'm absolutely amazed about it and I'm saying this from the video I saw of your wedding uh, you guys absolutely you know are made for each other you know sometimes you meet people at the right time and things begin and uh, you know I've seen so many updates of uh, Kimanzi you which also you know gave me insight and that's how I connected with you uh, you know started following you because you have also shared your journey uh, you know very openly with people, the challenges you had, you know, things that were stopping you and, you know, transforming from that person to this person. And you guys obviously are, you know, so both of you are so inspiring, so positive, so, uh, you know, uh, helping people believe in each other. So, of course, love always does win. Um, hey, and Sebastian, don't don't try to get me off the hook there. You asked a question for both of us and now you're trying to let me off the hook. So I want to tell you from my perspective, because you're right, sure. you have the harder conversations, right, in life. Um, for my perspective during the hiccup time, for me, I, from the moment that I kissed this woman, I knew that this was the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. I was all in. Now, just because I was all in didn't mean I knew how to actually get there, right? So yeah. I knew she was the one. I knew I wanted to be with her. I just, it seemed like it was so far off in the distance. I didn't quite know how to get there. So the, yeah. the gap, the hiccup, the space was figuring out how do I get to this version of Kamanzi that 
believes he is worthy, believes he deserves this, that he's not waiting for that other shoe, and the version of Kamanzi that's going to be willing to show up and step up. And so I had to work through all that. And I did get to the point, obviously, where I stepped up. But guess what? The journey's still continuing. It, it hasn't ended. So we're still going. Absolutely. And right. that's, that's a good point. You know, it's it's um, your personal development or your growth journey. It's not a destination. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. life. It's every day. And you're going to backslide. And you're going to have challenges. And, and so you're cool. you know, I had a lot of things. I had my own challenges to deal with during that time. You know, I was still yeah. grieving the loss of my husband. I'm ushering my children through the loss of their father. You know, I, the, my mom is ill. Like, there's lots of things that were going on at the same time. And so I could have chosen to have been like, okay, deal with your crap. You know, I'm not trying to do this right now. But that's not how you love someone. You have to love and them in the best. That's and exactly what it is about, understanding, giving that space, recognizing the need for that space, recognizing in a relationship, it is about relating. So you relate to the person, see what's really going on and how can you help? And sometimes that help is walking away for a bit, you know, letting them figure things out, you know, and then and go, go from there. And of course, I've seen you guys, uh, you know, evolving right in front of all of us and, you know, very proudly sharing even the, you know, challenges as well and actually helping other people understand that it is part of the process. That's how things happen. And I have to say, uh, from that video, the most romantic thing that since uh, the Kimanzi said that there was, I, I loved it. Uh, I'm going to try to be, I think something like, I'm going to try to be a good Mr. Cindy. That was just amazing. I, I was, I cried. You know, I was like, oh God, that's it. That's the kind of man you need, right? So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kimanzi, for joining us, for you know allowing me to do the, the surprise. I really appreciate that. And there you go. That's it. And um, yes, so Kimanzi, before I let you go, uh, I want you on my show as well. So make sure that we organize that soon. Thanks, mate. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye, babe. No Bye, babe. So how was that? A little surprise for you? Yeah. That was my wedding present for you. Yes. You do get all up in your business around here. <laughs> uh, we do. Okay, so speaking of which, um, we're going to wrap up soon. I just wanted to um, ask you one last thing. Uh, you know, things have changed. A new journey has started. And of course, you guys are still, you know, uh, it is still a little bit long distance. You know, you have to organize that. But one thing that I find beautiful is, and I've seen that your children are also getting along. You're also, you know, doing that. So yeah. again, it's about the positive perspective. Uh, was it challenging to get children involved as much as you guys are as an entire family? Um, I think the only challenging thing for us has been the logistics because mm -hmm. our kids are in all different places. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my oldest daughter is Mary and my son-in-law plays uh, professional baseball. And so they travel around the country a good bit themselves. And so right. the challenge is when they're home, and we can get Johnny and Garrett in the same room as, as everyone else. And then my youngest is a, a junior in high school. And she has a very packed schedule with academics and sports and extracurriculars and all of that kind of stuff. And she's a good bit of a travel bug as well. I mean, gosh, like this year alone, she's been to Australia, Chicago, New York. She's going to Iceland, Italy, Argentina, Hawaii. So she travels as much as I do. Um, <laughs> And so getting, you know, and then Kamanzi has three kids and one in college and two in high school, and they have their own activities. So the really the challenge has been logistically mm -hmm. getting them all together. Um, but right. beyond that, we haven't had any challenges. All the kids get along great. They like each other, you know, just fine. So it's, it's a logistics. Nightmare. I think it also comes from their, uh, you know, positive perspective their parents have. It's 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 the mindset you build around you. And that's where I wanted to take this, that you know, you and Kimanzi are obviously doing something right, that you know, even your children have that positive mindset and they get along with each other. There's no enmity, there's no, you know, uh, you know, this uh, rivalry can happen when it's a, yes. a, a situation like this. So yeah. And uh, in the end, I just want to ask you this. And just before that, I do want to say, there, you, I'm going to bring you back on this show, so please be prepared. We're going to okay. uh, come back for a second version with a totally different topic, and I'm going to get all of you 
again. But before that, one message that I, if, if there was one message you had to give to everybody out there facing different situations, personal or professional, and you know whether it's Me Too situation, something like that has happened to them. They have gone through something that literally breaks you, literally destroys your trust. Uh, despite all those negative situations, what's one thing people can do to maintain the positive perspective that you have that has helped you grow despite all the challenges, despite all the judgment and become into a beautiful person? Constantly, I see you evolving. What can people do to have to you know achieve love always wins? Well, I mean, I really think the best way is to to deal with your traumas. You know, we all have traumas. You know, I could laundry list for you all of the things that happened to me. You know, with, with domestic violence, rape, abuse. You know, I could just go on and on the list. Um, death, divorce. You know, all of the above. But deal with your traumas. You know, and don't let those traumas define you. You know, get professional help, whatever that looks like, whether it's counseling or, or you know, a spiritual counselor, mental counselor, whatever it is, deal with your traumas. But remember that you have to love you first and foremost. And, you know, we've heard this many, many times that you can't pour from, them in it, from an empty cup. And that's true. You want to pour from the overflow. So if you are taking care of you, Dousing yourself in love, you cannot give what you don't have. So if you're in self-loathing self -loathing over things that have transpired in your life or happened to you, that's going to translate through into everything you do and who you are because you're in a bit of cognitive dissonance there. You're pretending to be happy, and that's very, very different from being happy. Um, yes. You know, I've had people say, you know, annoyed by, by my other saying that I've never had a bad day in my entire life. Bad things have happened in my life, but I've never had an entire bad day because I get to choose moment by moment, you know, how I'm going to feel and how I'm going to look at it and what I'm going to choose to do with those things. They can be, you know, lessons or, you know, I can let them define me and I've chosen to allow them to be lessons in my life or blessings is what I like to call them, blessings and lessons. <laughs> Because even the bad things, and actually the bad things are where you grow. That's true in business and it's true in life. You know, no one is a successful um, business person that hasn't stumbled, fallen a few times. So I may be a little bent, but I am not broken. And so I choose Absolutely. to keep myself. Because I, love always wins. Because right? love always wins. Absolutely. I am so, so that. grateful to have you as a friend in my life. I'm uh, so grateful to, you know. Yeah. And you just proved, proved this just before this show as well. We had technical issues before the show started. Mm -hmm. Your patience, your kindness, and that's, you know, that's exactly what Kimanzi was saying is understanding. That's, you know, that's what you're all about. And that's what makes you so special. So I thank you so much for everything. I don't even have words. Thank you so much yeah, for, thank you for having me. Who you are, you know, literally, babe, you are amazing person. You are an inspiration. You are a friend. You are uh, you are a leader. You are absolute you know role model in so many ways. You help people just by being you. And you know I thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I don't go anywhere. Yes. Stay in the green room. We're going to talk about this as uh, after this as well. Sounds good. All right. So Bye much. everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, that's right, Kimanzi. Love always wins. You guys are amazing. So this was All Up In Your Business uh, with me, Sebastian Oney. But before we go, I do want to say, guys, uh, you know, that's right. Uh, you know, uh, Karen, fall into success, emergent soul. Absolutely. And I want you on the show as well, uh, Karen. So before we wrap up, I just want to first of all thank my producer, Alicia Curry. I created a lot of hiccup. <laughs> I dropped my camera change things around. So thank you so, so, so much, uh, Alicia, for with, with this wonderful production. Uh, you know our code 444444 a million times for. Thank you so much for running this show so smoothly despite everything that we had to go through. And uh, so yes, if you are watching this from anywhere, uh, if you're watching it live, do say live. We are ending now. So when you watch the replay, say hash replay. This show was brought to you by Sebastian.com and AliciaCurry.com. And it is 
live stream via, uh, via our preferred partner, BeLive.tv. And I just want to say to you guys, um, in, at any time, uh, when life brings you challenges, when life makes you question your uh, what's happening with you, and you have choices. You can be hateful, you can be angry, you can have rage, or you can look at the positive perspective. What do I learn from here? What do I gain from here? How can I make things better? And that changes everything. So until next, um, this was All Up In Your Business with me, Sebastian, and we'll see you next time on Adromaniac TV. You dream big, and we make it happen. Good night, guys. See ya.